So today I have for you a little down and dirty full body workout circuit. Okay. This can be for just someone that is working, looking for a way that they can work out relatively anywhere or for all of you pole and aerialists that are looking for a little off the pole, off the apparatus training that you can do while traveling or whatever it is. Okay. For these, all you need equipment wise is a pull up bar. Okay. Um, whether that's one that hangs in a doorway, pull up bar in your gym, pull up bar at the park, the toys in the park quite often have a good pull up bar. I'm using a set of stall bars or Swedish wall bars. These are freaking awesome, especially because you'll see there's some modifications that we can do that these will make your life so much easier. Um, and I'll have a little bit more info on those at the end if you want to know more about these. Okay. So to start, if you have your own warm up that you like to do, you already know your body's secret handshake, do that. Then, we're going to get into my first quick down and dirty little warm things. So I just like to go through some shrugs, take inventory, see how my shoulders are feeling. Okay. So for these, I'm going to start with just to hang. You can wrap your thumbs, not wrap your thumbs. Hang feels pretty good. You can add some little twists to it and then some shrugs. Elbows stay nice and straight and these are nice and controlled. You're not dumping into your shoulders as you come down. You're controlling it all the way up and all the way down five ten however many it is that you want to do depending on strength grip all the things okay just kind of take inventory of your shoulders pulling relatively evenly okay so those were hanging shrugs then we're going to take it to push-up shrugs okay so for these i'm using a um handstand uh board you don't have to i'm on carpet so i'm using this handstand board also by go beyond balance that makes the bars as well but like i said you don't have to use one of these i'm just on carpet and it makes it a little bit easier on the wrists okay so for these you're going to go to a plank position and you're going to go just shrugs ideally a plank position with straight arms but if you do have sensitive wrists and you do this one on your forearms for your warm-up feel free to do so if you do have sensitive wrists make sure you roll and warm up those bad boys okay so plank position you're going to do five to ten shoulder shrugs here sink into the shoulders push out of the shoulders sink into the shoulders push out of the shoulders the whole time belly buttons pulling towards your spine you don't want to be arching into it or piking into it but keeping that body relatively in a straight line as you control through the shoulders there's no bend in the elbows it's just coming from the shoulders okay so on those also five ten depending on your strength, comfort level, all those things, okay? So, warm up done. Our three, we're gonna start with core abdominal. This is gonna come from hanging, okay? On these, two different variations on these. Level one is gonna be a bent leg, of course. If you're up for an added challenge, add in a straight leg, okay? So, take it back up to your pull-up bar, hang, shoulders about shoulder width apart, thumbs can be wrapped or unwrapped, hang, then from there, Engage the shoulders, pull your belly button to your spine, knees to chest. Okay, try not to change the angle of your shoulders. This is happening in the abdominal area. It should not be happening in your lats so much. Okay, so 5'10", if you're up for an added challenge. Straight legs. Okay, so same five, 10, however many you wanna do. Okay, so there's our little quick down and dirty core. Now we're gonna take it to a little chest and tricep, okay? So for these, the push-up. We're just using our body weight, best thing we can use. Okay, you have your standard push-up, toes and hands. So for this one, um, you can either have your hands close together, you can have them wide, okay? I recommend working both. You might find one is more challenging for you than the other, and that varies person to person, okay? So make sure you start pushing up and out of the shoulders, belly buttons pulling towards your spine, inhale on the down, exhale on the up. Okay, what if that is not working for you yet? How do you get there? Let's talk modifications. One option, go to your knees, okay? If we're on our knees versus on our toes, it shortens our lever, it makes it like we have less to lift into it, okay? So knees, still focus on trying to find that straight line from your knees to your armpits. So you don't wanna be butt up or arching, but set it up on the knees, inhale on the down, exhale on the up. Great modification. 
okay? An added option that the stall bars facilitate, the higher up your hands are on the stall bar, as in the greater the angle above horizontal, the less intense it's gonna be, okay? So that can be a great option as well, is now you can go to a straight body, okay? So you can work a little more here, but a little bit less here, okay? So the higher up the hands are, the uh, easier it's gonna be. That being said, you do have to be careful on the stall bars to not hit your head. So use your head and don't hit your head. So just be aware of that, okay? So same with the stall bars, you can go narrow width, wide width, whichever you want. Okay, working those. And then you can work on going down farther and farther. Because like I said, the lower your hands are, the more challenging it's going to be. I do find the narrower or the lower my hands are, the more I have to bring them closer together so I don't whack my head. Okay, so there we have our chest and tricep exercises. Final one in our little down and dirty sequence is the pull-up. Okay, so for the pull-up, we're gonna be working our back and the biceps, okay? So we have our standard pull-up. So what if we're not there yet? Options for you. One of the things awesome with the stall bars, you can rest a foot or two on the stall bars and it lifts a little bit of the weight, okay? So this is a great modification. You can go narrow, wide, work them both also is good, okay? Put one or both feet up on the stall bars and then from here, that helps you pull up, okay? Your legs are lifting some of the weight. Okay, so that's a great modification. Um, if you don't have stall bars, you can use a chair. I do find having something where your legs are not directly underneath you pushing on something, it's better to have them a little bit more in front, I find, because you're less likely to overuse them, okay? So that's one modification. Second option modification is to use a band, okay? I am a huge advocate of the bands, um, not just because I'm their poster child. Um, these are made by Rubber Bandits. I'll include some info on those in the links below. For the bands, these are going to help you by lifting some of your body weight, okay? Calisthenics, which is body weight training, what we're doing, is awesome because it uses your own body weight to train. You don't need a lot of equipment. Downside is it uses your own body weight to train, which means you gotta lift it all. You can't just leave one butt cheek at home one day and be like, you know, I don't feel like lifting my whole butt today. We don't really have that option. So a band is a nice way to kind of give you that option and to make it a little bit easier by lifting one butt cheek, butt cheek for you. So with the band, um, these are the 41 inch bands. You can order them off of Rubber Bandit's website. Like I said, I'll put links below. You can also get similar brands from a sporting goods store. Um, I will say I do like the Rubber Bandit's one because they don't have a seam like a lot of them do, so you don't have to worry about them snapping on you, which I don't know, in my book, that's huge. I don't wanna get hit in the face of the band, okay? So for your band, you're just gonna put it over the pull-up bar, loop it back through itself, and pull, okay? Couple of things in the bands. The wider the band is, the more it's gonna give you an assist, okay? Downside is the more assist it gives you, the harder it is to get into it usually. So something to keep in mind, you have to kind of split the distance. So once the band's up on the pull-up bar, you can put your knee in it, you can put your foot in it, whichever you prefer, okay? You're gonna pull it down, put a knee in, and then from there, the band is helping lift some of your weight so that it makes it easier for you to obtain that full range of motion on your pull-up. Okay, so whether you're doing a pull-up or a push-up, I would highly recommend using one of the modifications if you need it to get your full range of motion. Better, better to do one of the modifications and get full range of motion than to not be able to work the full range of motion. Okay, it doesn't mean all, that you shouldn't also try doing some that are the more challenging ones without the modifications, but if you're doing pull-ups and all you're able to get to is right here, you're not able to train that full range of motion and fully get into the depth of training that muscle. Okay. So there are three down and dirty 
exercises to complete our full body circuit. We had hanging, abs, bent leg or straight. We had chest and tricep, okay, in our push up with a couple of modification issues. Modification issues, modification options. Let's call them options. I prefer options. Okay, we have our pull ups, which is working our back and our biceps, okay? And with that one, we also have modification options of either A, putting your feet up on the bars or using a band that you can put a leg in, okay? So focus on quality over quantity. Better to do three to five and get full range of motion and do them correctly than to try and bust out 10 and have your push-ups looking like this and then the next day have your shoulder hurting in some weird way, okay? So start with small numbers, do an entire circuit. If you're feeling relatively good but challenged, repeat the circus. Not circus, yes, it is a circus, but the circuit would be a good idea, okay? So focus on quality over quantity on these, um, making sure that you're not archy in your back because that definitely can cause some issues as well. So try it all out, maybe start with three or five a piece, work it all the way around. If you're feeling like you're ready to go big and you're up for 10, awesome, or work your way up to doing 10 of each of them. Maybe you're up to doing 20 or 25, depending on where you're at on the beast mode scale. Okay, so try all of those out. If you want more information on the stall bars, like I said, I'll put some links on those below. These stall bars I recently got and I'm so freaking stoked on because they don't bolt into the walls. I have wanted stall bars to be able to train on forever, but I didn't have a wall that I wanted to bolt them in and have to replaster and all the things when I eventually one day took them out. But these are a great standalone option. They have an option to put sandbags on them. I haven't needed to, and I've been doing all kinds of things with them. They have movement, but no more than like a stage pole would have. Not enough movement that I feel like they're gonna go anywhere. Just a little movement. And I would take that over the bolts in the wall. Okay, so these are a great option for small spaces, um, for training, that kind of thing. So like I said, I'm gonna leave links for those below. I'll also leave links below for the rubber bandits on those. If you have questions on either of them, like what works best for you, um, whether it's on the bands and the stall bars, feel free to reach out. Um, my contact info also is below. So hit me up, ask me your questions. Try this circuit out. Let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear it in the comments below. How many reps, how many circuits through did you get? And try to consistently add them in once a week, twice a week, get her done.